praise the lord all glory to our lord jesus christ who has given us this great opportunity to worship him the bible says worship the lord in the beauty of holiness worship the lord in spirit and truth before we start we look up to the lord and ask him to bless this time of worship the lord is a god who is living who understands all that we go through who speaks to our situations he sends his word and heals us shall we pray loving heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful time that you've given us to worship together lord even though we are so far away physically lord you have united us in your spirit father this time we ask you to bless this time of worship help us to worship you the way that you would like us to worship you lord let our meditations be acceptable to you speak to us oh heavenly father teach us show us the way we submit to your lordship and we ask you to bless us at this time giving all glory honor and praise in the name of the lord and savior jesus christ we pray amen shall we sing this chorus together the name of the lord is a strong and mighty tower refuge to my soul the name of the lord is a pillar i can lean on righteous run into the name of the lord the righteous run into the name of the lord the name of the lord is a strong and mighty tower name of the lord is a refuge to my soul name of the lord is a pillar i can lean on righteous run into the name of the lord the righteous run into the name Let us turn our attention to the word of God. Today's meditation is taken from the book of Jonah chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying, "Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you." We have been learning much from the life of Jonah the prophet. His act of disobedience and how god changed his direction and god in his grace sent a big fish to swallow him and put him on the shores of nineveh we don't know what he was doing there maybe he was dazed after the kind of submarine travel but god's word came to him a second time and god said arise we have been comparing jonah's life with that of the church i believe that god is telling the church to arise church arise the present condition of the church the present system of the church is not what was originally intended by god like jonah on the seashore just sitting there contemplating what to do god's word came to him to say arise i still have my plans for you 
But we need to be sensitive to what God is speaking to us, the church today. There is a great warning in the New Testament. When we read Luke chapter 3 and verse 2, we read like this. And Anna and Caiaphas were high priests. At that time, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. This verse speaks about the high priests in the Jerusalem temple. But it is so sad to read further where it says, The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. God's word did not come in his temple. Rather, the word of God came to a man in the desert. This makes us think a lot. As people of the church, do we listen or hear the word of God? The reason why God's word did not go to the high priest in the temple was that they were not willing to listen to God's word. They did not have the expectancy of God speaking to them. They had become too much of a traditional people. People gathered Sacrifices were made. There were a lot of uh, rituals that were happening in the temple. But God and His Word were conspicuously absent. What's the purpose of the temple? But when John received the Word, he preached it boldly. And people, when they came to John the Baptist, they asked him, what must we do? What must we do? Let me ask you this question. Every time you go to church, every time you listen to a message, do you have that prompting within you to ask this question, what must I do? If you don't have that prompting, you can understand there's something lacking somewhere. Most often Jesus was preaching outside of town. Huge crowds gathered to listen to his preaching. People climbed trees to look at Jesus. People opened roofs to read Jesus. People traveled by ship to listen to Jesus. What was special was the word of God was spoken. And when the word is preached, we can be sure that it will transform the lives of people. Let me point out to you two verses from Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 and 2. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Up, go down to the potter's house and there I will let my words come to your ears. God wanted his prophet to get up. Just like how God wanted Jonah to get up and go and preach. Here God tells his prophet Jeremiah to go to the potter's house. When I read this, I started to think, God could have spoken to Jeremiah very well in his own house. But what God wanted him to go to the potter's house so that God would reveal to him what he wanted to say. So we are living in a time when the churches were closed for some time. Now the churches are open, but many people have become very comfortable listening to the word of God from the comfort of their homes. They feel that they can listen to the word of God or worship at home. Let me tell you this. When God tells you to go, you need to go. The Bible very clearly says, that we should never, never refrain from the gathering of the saints. You know, it's a trick of the enemy. He puts in our mind, you know, there's a lot of risk uh, going to church. But we don't feel any risk going shopping. We don't feel any risk going to malls. We don't feel any risk going to workplaces or attend weddings or funerals.
But when it comes to church, there is a lot of confusion or fear. And that is not from God, it's from the enemy. Today, let's tell the Lord, Lord, as I listen to your word, I will go and worship you in the church. Genesis chapter 35 and verse 1. God said to Jacob, Go up now to Bethel and make your living place there and put up an altar there to God who came to you when you were in flight from your brother Esau. Now Jacob, when he came initially to the place of Bethel, he was in a totally different state. But after a period of time, God blessed him. You know, at that time, at the beginning, he was afraid. He did not know his future. He was confused. He was alone. But when he met God in that place, he was empowered. He was blessed. He was excited. He was confident. But now, after several years, he has a family. He has so much of wealth. But there was a lack in his commitment to God. And that is when God reminds him, tells Jacob, go up now to Bethel. And make your living place there. You know, we should feel comfortable going to church, being a part of a church or a fellowship. It's very important. As people of God, let us tell the Lord, Lord, give me back that joy. You know, initially when we started to worship together, what amount of joy we had. But slowly with the passing of time, so many changes came. So many changes. And that excitement died down. With time, we lost that interest in God's word. We lost the interest we had to read the Bible, to pray. Let's take this decision. Because the walk with God is two-way. We come to a point of complacency in our life where we just expect God to bless us. But from our part, we don't want to do anything. We just want to walk risk-free. That's not the calling. God calls us to be partners with Him. The partnering with God is so exciting you can be sure that you can see supernatural things happening in your life. Let me give you this example from the life of Abraham. Genesis chapter 13 and verse 17, God said, Get up. God told Abraham, Get up. Walk about the land through its length and width, for I will give it to you. You know, Abraham was a man who received the promise of God. But here God tells him, Get up and walk. It's time but here God tells Abraham, get up and walk. Walk through the length and breadth and I will give it to you. It's not just faith, it's not just believing, but to put our faith in action to do what God wants us to do as a church. Let's take a decision. Lord, I will do what you want me to do. It's enough of me just coming, sitting, singing a few songs, listening to a, a message and just going back without having any change in my heart, without any change in my routine, just being like a machine, Lord, change that and give me an excitement whenever I come to worship you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 2, we read like this, God said, My servant Moses is dead. Get ready now, you and all the people of Israel. And cross the Jordan River into the land that I am giving them. Moses was a great leader. You know, some church leaders are so great. They lead by example. Very charismatic. They have a great influence on the people who listen to them. 
But however great the leaders are, they are humans. They all die one day. In the recent times, we lost a lot of wonderful, godly men and women. Great leaders, great pastors, great teachers. But what after them? After they're passing away, does it mean that we need to just keep quiet or be in mourning for a long time or keep listening to what they had preached? No. The Spirit of God is able to raise up greater leaders. Elijah was a great man. Elisha had a double portion of his spirit. Here Joshua is commanded by God. He says, Moses is dead. Now come on, rise up and go and cross the Jordan River. You know, that was the time when the Jordan River was overflowing its banks. It was not an ordinary thing to cross that river at that particular time. But when God is with you, when God's word is empowering you, you can cross any river or any sea. Dear people of God, the Lord is speaking to you. He says, it's enough of sitting down. Get up. Go forward. I'm with you. I will bless you. Shall we pray? Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for teaching us from the lives of your servants. Lord, in this life that we live, so many times we just sit down. We just feel exhausted. We just feel we can't go any further. But Lord, you're a God who empowers, who strengthens, who makes us walk, who makes us run, who makes us do whatever you want us to do. Lord, I pray for all the dear people of God who listen to this message. Lord, thank you for assuring them that your plans for their life is still incomplete and that they have to get up and start to walk in faith in this great partnership that you have called your children. As your servant, I bless them and I pray that you will raise up mighty testimonies for your glory from these people who listen to this word. We give you all glory, honor and praise. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The first hymn that we are going to sing this time of worship is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. This world is looking for friends most often in the wrong place. But we have a friend who is faithful. We have a friend who understands. We have a friend who is willing to be with us to lead us and guide us through eternity. What a friend we have in Jesus. sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we offer.
friends despise for sake take it to the lord in prayer it is up to you take and shield thee i will find the solace Jesus taught his disciples. He said if you have faith, you can look at a mountain and speak to it. So often there are mountains that stand in our way. But by faith we can speak to mountains and they will move because we speak not under our authority. but from the authority of the word of god this is the song which says mountain you got to move let's speak in faith mountain you got to move oh mountain you got to move i speak right now in the name of jesus made up my mind i'm going through a mountain you got to move a mountain you got to move i speak right now in the name of jesus mountain you got to chapter 11 verse 23 Amen I tell you if someone says to this mountain be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but trust that what he says is happening so shall it be for him may the lord break or move every mountain that stands in your way because we speak not under our authority but from the authority of the word of god all heavens declare the glory of the risen lord who can compare the beauty of the lord all heavens declare the glory of the risen lord who can compare the beauty of the lord who can compare the beauty of the lord forever he will be the lamb upon the throne I gladly bow my knee and worship him alone forever he will be the lamb upon the throne I gladly bow my knee She 
worship Him alone. I will proclaim the glory of the risen Lord, who once was slain. Reconciled man to God, I will proclaim the glory of the risen Lord, who once was slain to reconcile. Thank you, Father. Thank you for giving us this wonderful time to worship you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your presence. The mighty presence we feel in our hearts, in our homes. Wherever we are. Oh, Heavenly Father, I speak the name of Jehovah Shalom into the lives of each and every person who is a part of this worship, Lord. May the Holy Spirit of God strengthen and empower and help your people to get up and fulfill your purpose in their lives. The past is something that we cannot change. The future is in your hands, Lord. But the present you have given to us, help us this day to do whatever we need to do this day. We submit to your Lordship. We ask you, Lord, to be the Lord of our lives. Speak to us and we will obey. Father, we thank you for telling us today to arise and shine. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen.